Good morning. Uh, today is the 4th of April, about 11.40 a.m. here in New York, and uh, we will be starting our Selenium with Java session today. Um, I just have to let you folks know that uh, um, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing a full class today. The only reason for that is uh, um, this being a long weekend, um, some of uh, the students had requested me, uh, a little late though, but they had requested me that uh, we should uh, start next week. And uh, since um, the invitation had gone out uh, by the time, so I, um, I was not able to decide. So we uh, will make a decision sometime during the session today. And uh, I'll let you know because uh, we have a very limited uh, number of people joining us today. Um, so we will decide during the session if uh, uh, the strength increases, uh, then I will continue and do a full session. Otherwise, uh, we will do uh, like uh, uh, an hour or so. Uh, but I'm not going to count this session. So when we start next time, it's going to be uh, right from the beginning. So um, just to um, make sure that um, you know, I uh, share with you some of the information as what uh, exactly we're going to be doing as a part of this course. Uh, um, all right, so to start off, uh, my name is Erfan and I will be your uh, trainer and I will be with you for the next uh, eight session. Um, the way we're going to be running this training is it's going to start um, on the weekend, Saturdays and uh, Sundays. Uh, every uh, session is going to be two hours long. Uh, so we're going to be meeting at 11.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we will decide as far as the time is concerned. We're going to be deciding whether we should be starting a little early, uh, meaning that uh, if can we do it at uh, 11. Um, so if we start at 11, it's going to run for two hours, so it's going to end at 1. If we start at 11.30, it's going to end at 1.30. All right. Now, as far as the course is concerned, um, there uh, will be a serious effort on my part to transfer the knowledge. Um, I'm not doing it for the first or the second time. You uh, probably are the 34th batch that I am teaching, and uh, we have been doing it for a little over uh, five years now. And uh, um, uh, basically, uh, we will be putting in some serious effort to make sure that uh, you learn and uh, you learn in such a way that uh, you become productive uh, right on day one on your job. And let's say if you're looking for a job, uh, this training is going to help you tremendously because uh, that's what had happened in the past uh, with so many people uh, who have taken our training. And uh, believe it or not, uh, the going rate, um, depending on what part of the country you would be uh, applying for jobs, would be somewhere around like uh, in the range of uh, $55 to $75 per hour. So if you multiply that by 2,000 hours, because that's basically what uh, um, uh, is the average uh, number of hours we work in a year. So we are talking about at least $110,000 if you go as a contractor. If you go as a, uh, a full-time employee with all the benefits and all that, then we are talking about um, on an average, again, depending on what part of the country you would be applying for a job, somewhere definitely between seventy-five to um, $90,000. Uh, again, it depends on what part of the country. If you happen to live in uh, um, just to take a state, nothing um, you know, against uh, uh, Iowa or Idaho or, for that matter, South Dakota, um, North Dakota. I mean, you know, um, only because uh, you have limited corporations doing business in those uh, places. Uh, but if you um, go to happening cities like um, uh, New York, um, or if you go to um, San Francisco, if you go to Dallas, Chicago, if you go to uh, Minneapolis, um, you know, any areas where there are uh, there is a corporate presence, uh, there are a lot of IT companies. Uh, Selenium is being used extensively these days, uh, and uh, this uh, might come as a news to you that Selenium has uh, given a strong competition to QTP, um, which is no longer the leader in the software um, you know, testing. Uh, once upon a time, QTP was the uh, de facto leader when it comes to the tool that was used for software testing, but uh, not anymore. The reason for that is uh, um, QTP, which has been upgraded now, and it's no longer called as QTP, it's called as uh, UFT. Um, basically, it is uh, uh, a license-based tool. So if you uh, go under courses and if you take a look into uh, the stuff that we uh, do, uh, you'll find what we do here in QTP and all that. Likewise, uh, you could go and then look under any uh, different course and you would find the details of that course. So um, coming back to the, the competition uh, Selenium has given to uh, QTP uh, is... Uh, 
um, is uh, beyond uh, you know comprehension because of the fact that uh, uh, selenium is a free tool. Um, again, there's a lot of perception out there uh, with uh, something free that is uh, not uh, um, you know uh, uh, up to its uh, level of uh, delivering uh, you know uh, value. But uh, that has been put to rest uh, with. Uh, uh, Google adapting Selenium as their tool for testing their uh, software. Now you can imagine if uh, Google, uh, a company of that magnitude, has used uh, Selenium for their uh, testing tool, uh, then uh, you know there's no looking back. Um, so that is the reason a lot of corporations have uh, started uh, jumping onto the bandwagon of Selenium. Uh, whether it is Selenium with Java, whether it is Selenium with C Sharp, um, you know, um, basically. They are both in demand. Uh, C Sharp a little bit more in demand, and that is the reason we have uh, uh, priced it a little uh, expensive compared to um, Java. Uh, the reason for that is uh, there is uh, it is in demand only because uh, not because of uh, uh, the number of companies using it, but. It is in demand because there are not enough resources uh, that are knowledgeable in C Sharp. Um, so if you go out on the street, I mean, just trying to give you an example, and uh, uh, just shout, is there a Selenium guy? Probably like uh, three, four people would run at you. And if you say, uh, is there a, a QTP guy? Uh, probably more than a dozen people would uh, run at you. So that tells you uh, the uh, difference between the supply and demand in terms of uh, uh, there is a, a huge supply of resources knowing QTP. Same time, there is good amount of resources uh, available out there, resources in terms of testers available out there with Java, um, Selenium with Java, uh, but very limited with Selenium with C Sharp. Uh, but the jobs are also on the Java side. Now, um, if you have to put a number, I would say that about uh, um, good 80% of the Selenium jobs are on um, Java side, uh, and uh, the remaining is on uh, other languages like C Sharp and uh, uh, Ruby and Perl and, and stuff like that. Uh, so um, if you look for opportunities in Selenium, uh, you will notice that Selenium um, um, Selenium testers, let's say, um, you could find a tremendous amount of opportunities for Selenium guys. A lot of, lot of companies are looking any different part of the country. I mean, it doesn't matter if you are uh, here in uh, New York or if you are in San Francisco or if you are in Dallas, if you're any part of the country, east, south, north, um, west, uh, there are a good number of jobs available for Selenium guys, right? So uh, you can um, go to DICE and then you could look for that. Now, what are they looking for in a job? Basically, they are looking for you to know as how to build frameworks. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing as a part of this course. We will be learning as how to build frameworks. Now, um, the the way we're going to be coding, the way we're going to be learning to build our frameworks is, is going to be in such a way that uh, uh, it is going to be a very, very, very reusable framework. Because uh, uh, the idea here is whenever you create a framework, um, you know, uh, and a framework is nothing but a complete solution that is... Uh, um, required um, by a company to do what? To do their testing. So if you are going to build a framework, the framework should be built in such a way that uh, that framework is uh, um, basically what is called <coughs> reusable. Uh, so the framework that we will be building is going to be uh, reusable, right? And apart from it being reusable, uh, reusable. Uh, you know what what I mean, um, and it will also uh, be easily easily uh, uh, maintainable, right? Um, so you should be able to easily maintain that, and it is highly highly what highly scalable, right? Now uh, I have used some terms in here, so you got to have a clear cut understanding of what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is uh, when you create a framework. Uh, you got to make sure that you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, meaning that if you move from a project to project, let's say today you are employed at um, Bank of America or you're em employed at Citibank or let's say Verizon or for that matter, you fill in the blank as far as the name of the company is concerned. So you're going to be working there for like six months, eight months, nine months, right? And uh, most of the time these projects, they don't go beyond a year. And that is good because you don't want to uh, get stale. You don't
don't want to get uh, stagnant. You don't want to be like, uh, uh, you know, uh, living with the same company forever. Today, uh, the times are different. It's no longer, um, you know, our dad's time, like, you know, going back uh, the 20, 25, 30 years. I mean, you want to stick with a company like IBM and then, you know, retire from that company. And uh, today, you know, you you got to make money, you got to rise up, and you got to climb the corporate ladder. And the way it is done is, uh, you know, you work, you learn, you move on. And uh, it's not like, uh, you know, a marriage in the sense that, okay, you have to be committed forever. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to be jumping from a girlfriend to girlfriend, meaning that from a job to job. So what you do is you stick for a good amount of time, you know, learn the new uh, skills, the new way of doing things and all that. And then, um, you know, don't uh, put a dagger in their back and say that, oh, I'm leaving. You know, try to uh, make sense to them. Say that, uh, okay, I know these things. Uh, I think, um, you know, I can. You sit down and then you negotiate with them. You say that, okay, I'm making X amount of dollars and I do, you know, this kind of work, but then I, I want to, uh, you know, uh, take some challenges and, uh, you know, you, you give me, you know, whatever you want to ask them. So again, it's not a matter of uh, money all the time. You have to take up challenges and then you have to make sure that you rise up uh, the corporate ladder so that you are, you are respected. And the way you're going to be respected is if you know the stuff. And that's the effort that we're going to be making in here, making sure that my experience of pla uh, past 19 years is what uh, I'm going to bring to the table and then share with you. So um, a little bit about myself, um, you know, not more than a minute uh, or probably less than that. I did my master's in computer science in the year 1997-1998 uh, from New York. And uh, since then, I've been working in IT and I have, um, you know, uh, filled many different um, positions. I started my career as a, as a developer. I used to work in uh, Visual Basic 6. Uh, this is going back in 97-98 and uh, probably that was the time internet was uh, sort of like coming out and uh, you know there was no Google, there was no Amazon, there was no nothing. Yahoo was mostly like in, in its infancy stage. There was nothing like what we have today. So um, I switched from um, the client server onto uh, the web uh, way of uh, building my application. So I started with uh, classic ASP. For those of you folks who know Microsoft platform, today you know that uh, Microsoft uses something called .NET. There was no .NET at that time. I'm talking about 97, 98. .NET came out in the year 2000. So I am from that time. I am almost like a, a, a guy from a previous era. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, I kept myself on my toes, uh, learned stuff, and uh, I started rising up in my career. And today I work for a major, major uh, corporation here in New York. Uh, I uh, work as a director, and I have like 23 people working under me. And we basically manage, um, you know, um, mission-critical um, applications. And uh, what we do is we integrate with major um, businesses of the world. And... Uh, um, so I have gone through the development, I have gone through um, production support and uh, now um, basically I, I do all, uh, you know, software um, testing and, uh, and I mean I head that team. So uh, we have been using a lot of tools uh, and the tools that we have been uh, using, uh, it spreads from, you know, uh, your QTP to Selenium to uh, Ruby Cucumber um, to on the performance side we use JMeter and LoadRunner on the uh, web service side uh, for the testing of the web services we use uh, a SOAP UI which is the new version of that is ReadyMate um, or ReadyMate Ready API as they are calling it today. So uh, these are the courses um, you know I I present and uh, you have a choice of taking all of these courses uh, um, or you have a choice of like taking the courses um, as you need and. Uh, uh, what I bring to the table is the real life. There is nothing like, okay, you know, you learn from a book and then you teach and you notice that um, you will never find me using any PowerPoint. Um, because uh, I don't believe in reading stuff off a of PowerPoint that uh, to me uh, never excited uh, when others they do it and I am not going to do it. So I will give you all 100% um, practical and hands-on, um, you know, examples of what is being used in the industry. So the um, the knowledge that you're going to be getting out of here, you can put it to use right on day one, only because the uh, the uh, Frameworks that we're going to be building are going to be reusable. What do you mean by reusable? So the thing that you're going to be building here, the, the code that you're going to be uh, taking away from this course, you could literally plug in that course into any of the applications that you're going to be using out there. Of course, there are going to be some minor modifications here and there. So uh, we will be creating excellent frameworks that will be using things like uh, 
um, out of the box um, integration with something like a J unit. Now, I might be throwing terms at you which are uh, sort of like foreign to you. You are like, what the heck is he talking about? J unit? I don't even know what J unit is. Uh, then I would say we will be using something called test NG. Then you say, oh, come on. And now I don't even know about J unit and he's going to be talking to me about test NG. Well, I'm just trying to give you these words uh, um, or these buzzwords uh, not to um, you know, gloat uh, um, about myself. What I am trying to do is I'm trying to give you an idea of what you are getting into so that you could make a good decision whether you belong to this course or not. Now, uh, JUnit and TestNG are the um, frameworks uh, that are being used in the industry today. So we, I will be showing you everything as how to integrate uh, with these uh, frameworks. Now, in order to integrate with this uh, ready-made frameworks which are out there, you have to have some knowledge of uh, the tools uh, because the tool that we will be using is something called Eclipse. Now Eclipse is being used by, if I have to put a number, probably like uh, more than 80% of the corporations out there that uh, will be using Eclipse to build uh, Selenium frameworks. Uh, so we will be learning uh, in and out of Eclipse. Now Eclipse is a tool. If you want to build a, a, a resume, uh, of course you you don't use Eclipse for that. What what tool do you use? Uh, you use Microsoft Word because that's where you go. You type and then you basically would uh, add your headers and footers and then you you add your margins and then you nicely format and what comes out is your resume. So with Eclipse, what we're going to be doing is we'll be writing some code. Now when we say code, a lot of people they have like a um, you know, butterflies uh, in their stomach. Oh gosh, coding. I mean, you know, I, I'm not a programmer. How can I do coding? Well, uh, nobody is born a programmer. I mean, the guy who invented C as the programming language, he did not knew C when he, at, at once upon a time, he did not knew it. He learned it, right? So anything out there can be learned provided you have the uh, desire to make it happen. And on top of just the desire, you really got to get intimate with it. Meaning that, I mean, if you really love your spouse, uh, you will do anything for it, for her, right, or for him. Uh, likewise, if you really want to make it big in Selenium, then you have to get in love with, uh, you know, coding. And uh, coding is, believe it or not, it's not as difficult as your spouse is going to be. You have to really work hard with your spouse or with your boyfriend or, or with your girlfriend. In, with, in case of coding, it's not necessarily that. Because there are simply, you know, five things that you need to master. Number one, you need to know about variables because you will be using variables. So you've got to know what are variables, how do I create them, how do I use those variables in my script. Next thing that you've got to know is about arrays because uh, you will be using arrays and uh, arrays are basically a substitute of variables when you have to store large amount of data. Uh, so you could, rather than using like 10 different variables, you could go and uh, create an array and then you could put uh, data into an array and then you could take out data from an array. So you got to be known as how to do that. Now, anything you're learning, right? Anything you're learning in the beginning is going to be a challenge. I recall the time when I was learning to swim. You know, this is going back almost like probably like 30 years ago. Um, it was difficult for me. I was scared of water. I was scared. Of, I mean, today, I mean, that's one of the uh, things I look forward to because, you know, uh, I live in an area where uh, you can't go out and swim. Uh, I've been living in New York for past like 21 years and uh, uh, you know that almost like seven, eight months, uh, you know, unless uh, you want to go uh, and pay for the indoor, uh, you know, swimming pools. I mean, you know, you you can't, uh, you know, swim. Uh, the only way you could swim uh, is, uh, you know, in, in nice warm waters. And that in New York happens only uh, for like three or four or five months maximum, right? So I look forward to it. Why? Because I like it. Uh, and that's what is going to happen with uh, the coding with you. You will look forward to it. Why? Because it's going to fetch you big bucks. The way it's going to fetch you big bucks is if you're a manual tester right now, the maximum amount of money that you would be making today is probably what, $38, $40 an hour, maximum tops I'm talking about. If you're very good, probably team lead of manual testers, maybe $45 an hour. I think it's, it's time to grow out of that, right? And the way you can grow out of that is uh, basically learn automation. And whether you're learning Selenium with Java, Selenium with C Sharp, or whether you're going to SOAP UI, whether you're going to JMeter, whether you're going to, um, you know, fill in the blank as far as the tool is concerned. Try to be good in that tool. The way you're going to be good in that tool is uh, automation is always about coding. So when it comes back to coding, variables, arrays. The other thing that you need to know about coding is functions. 
you got to be knowing about functions. How do you create a function? How do you use a function? How do you call a function? Function sometimes needs to be passed parameters. Now, when you hear things like that for the very first time, again, it's like sort of like if you're not panicked, you're like, eh, you know, should I do it? Should I not do it? Because, you know, this thing seems to be like a little bit crazy. Again, I give you an example of driving. Forget about swimming. Not many people would like to swim. How about driving? We all drive. Right. If you happen to be in 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 USA, you got to drive. Right. So you drive. So when you started uh, in the beginning, you probably were looking at uh, the brakes and the accelerator, and then you were looking at uh, you know your steering, and then you look at uh, where do you ignite uh, or the ignition key, where does it go? And uh, but today you take all those things for granted. I mean, you know, you it it is it is part of our lives today so the same is going to happen with programming and uh, if you um, I happen to be in San Francisco um, you know a few months back and I noticed that uh, in the morning and I was on vacation so I mean what did I care I just wanted to go out in the city and all that but I just wanted to I was curious uh, so um, I, I, I one day out of like six days I were there uh, one day I, I woke up uh, a little early and I wanted to uh, you know uh, look out and then go uh, so I I took a uh, I took a uh, uh, I mean what do they call that trams or whatever they call it I don't know here in New York we call it subway but there they call it trams or what I don't know um, everywhere I turned my head around I mean uh, everywhere in the tram I turn it is 90 percent it's Indians and I'm like what I mean what's happening here I mean I I originally come from India. I mean, you know, um, but I moved here long, long time ago before even the IT boom. Uh, we came uh, here. The whole family migrated, so I came here. Uh, there were hardly, uh, you know, uh, any uh, restaurants or, or any movies or anything uh, playing at that time. Uh, unlike today, I mean, today uh, everywhere you turn around is, uh, you know, a lot of Indians. Why do you see that? The reason for that is. Uh, Software um, industry, particularly development, testing, and all that, is dominated by um, us Indians. Uh, there are a lot of uh, Indians all around. And uh, why do you think that they are there? I mean, uh, I can tell you one thing about Indians. I mean, they're not going to be sticking to any uh, field if there is no uh, benefit or there is no money, right? So you see a lot of money in this uh, in this field. So that's why they are there. There was a time, uh, you know, uh, everywhere you see. Uh, um, you know, people would be uh, dying to become uh, like a doctor because they think that uh, there's, there's good money in doctor. But uh, uh, today, there's good, decent money in software uh, industry. Uh, I mean, whatever you do, if you're doing uh, development, there is good, decent money. If you're doing software testing, software testing once upon a time was uh, looked upon like, uh, eh, you know, if you can do nothing, then you should go into software testing. Not anymore because there is automation now. So you, there is respect now in this field only because, um, you know, there is all also coding there is also programming so coming back to programming variables arrays functions the other thing that you need to know in programming is uh, you need to know about the conditional logic conditional logic is if something is true then I am going to call this function if there are more than um, you know uh, 10 test cases uh, then I am going to uh, basically uh, call a particular Excel sheet and get the data from that Excel sheet and then you know do things like that so there is something called uh, if statement then we have to learn if else if and stuff like that so that's conditional logic that we need to learn as far as the programming is concerned coding is concerned the last uh, uh, is about the loops so we will be doing something called uh, for loops or uh, while loops, do while loops and stuff like that. So uh, basically these are the only things that you need to master and together if you put these things together you will be building a, an excellent, excellent what? Excellent framework. So that framework that you, you will be uh, building, that framework uh, will be using a lot of object oriented programming. Now object oriented programming is nothing but the ability to uh, use objects. So uh, think about it uh, as far as objects is concerned um, when people hear object oriented programming they think that it is for programmers it's not for testers not not true uh, because in in our uh, framework we will be using object oriented programming and um, sometimes um, uh, I, I hope uh, you will um, try and understand where I'm going with this if I give you this example. When I was doing my master's in computer science uh, about uh, in the year 1996, uh, um, it feels like uh, a century ago, um, but uh, 
uh, that was the time uh, I was a student and uh, we used to have a professor uh, and he used to work for IBM the guy with the white shirt with the tie and with the suit and uh, and we used to master so graduate classes are usually conducted in the evening so I used to work during daytime and uh, run to the classes in the evening so uh, you're already tired uh, working all day uh, and then when you run to the class in the evening and here is your C++ professor who would come and uh, um, you know IBM guy and uh, you could imagine uh, I mean at that time there was no uh, much of internet uh, like today you go to Google and then you could literally uh, you know Google is the answer for anything in life I mean if, if you have literally pain in the butt you have you could go and say I have pain in my butt and how do I cure it there will be some solution because there are a lot millions of people who experience that and then they would say that oh if you have pain in the butt now uh, you know uh, try and find out the uh, you know cause of it maybe it is because of your friend kick him out maybe it's because of your husband you know stay away from him whatever so there are you know reasonings and all that because in internet is there Google is there at that time there was no Google there was no you know very little internet Yahoo was the only uh, you know portal out there and there was not much out there so we had to do a lot of work on our own so this professor comes in he teaches you C++ and uh, the guy talks to we are students who are like 21 22 23 24 25 years of old and he would talk to you and he was 60 year old probably like 65 year old and he would talk to you as if like we are all professors and he would bring in concepts uh, and discuss to you in a way that you are like scratching your head and trying and figuring it out like what the heck is he talking about and it gives you such a bad taste in your mouth like you're like struggling in that course you want to drop out that course and all that right so even though the guy was a master in his own uh, you know skills but uh, you know he was talking to us on a very different level so I cannot forget that I cannot forget it so e even though uh, you know let's assume that I know some stuff from my past you know 18 19 20 years of experience you know if not for anything you know only because of time you would learn something so imagine that I have some knowledge now my 19 20 years of knowledge I I, I cannot bring that to you and talk to you on that level can I I mean you would you would hate me for that if not hate me you would you know the best thing that you would do is drop out of this course which I don't want to right so what would I do I am going to talk to you on a level so that you would totally understand and not only understand you would be able to teach this to somebody else to your friend to your spouse to your whoever you should be able to you know talk about it and understand so object oriented programming even though a difficult concept we're going to be making it easy for all of you now the way I will try to make it easy is again give you some real life examples and I'm going to talk to you as if I'm talking to you know uh, my <coughs> my daughter right and my daughter is let's say 14 years old so no offense I'm not going to treat you as a kid but the whole objective here is make sure that we ramp up right we make we we start on a very low level and then we come up to a certain level in this next uh, four weeks because we don't have a year here we don't have a semester here of six months or four months we don't even have like two months we have like one month and I gotta make sure gradually to teach you as much as I can in this one month so uh, we have to be realistic so I am going to uh, expect a lot of work from you from your side I'm gonna do my part you have to do your part so what is that your part you would be doing well this is what you I expect from you you should be um, you should be watching the video so once you uh, make the uh, decision to join this course if you have not already we have a lot of people who have already joined and we have already shared the videos with them uh, for you folks um, we will be uh, once you register this is what we do we have been uh, training in different courses as you can see uh, we have all of these different batches that's going on right so a lot of selenium a lot of soap UI a lot of uh, uh, you know UFT and uh, different courses and all that so uh, every month we religiously conduct uh, this course uh, selenium so I am going to give you the videos from the previous batch so let's say I'm gonna give you the videos from the uh, January 2015 batch so if you go in here um, you will notice that there are going to be eight uh, videos there are going to be eight videos as you can see starting from uh, day one day two day three day four day five day six uh, and day seven and day eight right and as you can see here 
uh, there are uh, this is the duration of each video you know on an average we talk about for like uh, two hours so sometimes a little bit more and less uh, so this is two hours 16 minutes and this is two hour one minutes two hour three minutes so the average is about two hours so you got to be watching these videos before you come to the class so we will give you these videos and these videos are from our previous batches so we're not going to be doing everything exactly the same like what we have done in the previous batch so we have applications to test and I'm gonna uh, you know take up the challenge of like using different applications to do the testing so um, I want you to watch these things along with this there is also a section called must watch videos so if you can see here selenium java must watch videos and then there are um, you know uh, videos on certain topics that uh, we might not do justice in terms of like uh, putting in uh, long uh, time during the session uh, about these topics so I want you to watch the video so that you get some ideas as how to do it right so um, coming back to uh, to give you an example uh, RC server now um, selenium selenium has got um, multiple modes uh, there is something called selenium IDE uh, which is used for recording and playback and then there is RC server which is um, you know yesteryear's uh, technology yesterday's technology not uh, being used uh, you know that um, uh, frequently in today's world um, but um, you know it's good to know uh, that so you can watch some of the videos in here you'll get an idea and then there is web driver our focus is going to be web driver we're going to be starting web driver and we'll be working on web driver uh, so that's basically what I, I would like you to do so um, uh, coming back to uh, your role into all of this uh, we will give you eight assignments there are going to be eight sessions and there are going to be eight assignments so when you um, when you complete those eight assignments those eight assignments are going to give you um, you know very good um, you know idea of uh, uh, you know how to answer interview questions uh, they're gonna give you a very good idea of uh, how to basically um, you know prepare uh, you know for your interviews and if you're already in a project um, you know uh, you will get some hands-on experience and then you will be able to talk about these things uh, in your uh, real life uh, and uh, not just talk about it uh, but you should be able to implement those uh, things okay so um, now I have to um, basically uh, go over a few things before uh, we actually put our hands on um, these assignments that you you're going to be working I will not be asking you every week uh, whether you have submitted these assignments or not but I can um, you know rest my case by just saying uh, one thing and that is uh, uh, from our past five years of uh, online training um, I can tell you that people who have done who have completed their assignments they happen to be um, you know more um, uh, they happen to have more chances of getting a job compared to the ones who did not do the assignment so I strongly uh, suggest that you uh, complete the assignments and you do the assignments okay now um, uh, the assignments are going to be uh, challenging depending on what uh, part uh, of the uh, course we are dealing with uh, day one day two day three assignments are going to be easy uh, but starting off from day four onwards it's, it's going to get uh, a little bit uh, tedious or it's going to get a little bit challenging so um, how can you expect help well uh, this is what you got to be doing again uh, we will be making you members of our private forum so uh, go to groups.google.com um, and once you go to groups.google.com I am the admin of uh, the groups that we have created here so uh, you would see that uh, there are lots of groups I belong to because I created them but in your case uh, when you click on my groups after you say groups.google.com and you log in when you click on my groups you would see the group that you belong to so if you have taken more than one course with us then you would be seeing some other uh, groups as well but uh, in this case you will be uh, a part of the selenium uh, training right selenium training uh, group so if you go in here um, before you for the past uh, so many years there are a lot of other students who have done these courses so if you have a question at any time of the day uh, if you want you know, some solution for it don't call me or don't uh, even email me directly uh, I mean there's a reason I'm, I'm telling you I mean not that I don't want to take your phone call but uh, I want you to exhaust all your options before you come to me and that's how you would learn to explore uh, what is out there so basically you you could go in here and then let's say if you're having any trouble with the databases so you would say database 
connections, let's say. You you query now, you say database connection. And when you do that, now uh, before you, probably there are a lot of people who have done that. Probably I used connections, uh, just say, let's say database. So before you, there are a lot of uh, people who have done this. So they will, uh, they would have asked this question. SQL parameterization help needed. I wrote this uh, below for Expedia.com and then da 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 da. So he or she, whoever that is, uh, they have they have done all of this. This is their code, right? Whatever they have. Now you are you are looking at it and you are like, oh my God, I cannot do this. Well, I, you know, I I am jumping into almost like day four, day five, day six stuff, and uh, I, we have not even started yet. So of course you have to be a little bit overwhelmed just looking at this code. But uh, I will I will make sure that I I show you uh, and I make sure that uh, you learn these things in such a way that uh, you will be able to manage. Uh, you know uh, what if they can do it, you can do it. Uh, so you should be able to do it. So coming back to the question of the using the forum, so post your questions there. So try and give. As much uh, details as you can so if you search for something if you don't find it then you could just create your own and the way you can create your own is go into the new topic and then type the subject here and type whatever is the issue and make sure that you add a screenshot or something attach a file that way a lot of people would be able to help you out uh, so that's what you should be doing all right okay now um, so I have addressed to you the options uh, that you have uh, at your disposable uh, to interact with us uh, um, offline. So offline is this is what you would be doing. You would be sending it through the um, you know uh, forums online while you are here. Even though this, uh, we call it as an interactive session, you might have noticed that I do uh, all the talking and I'm not giving you any chance to do the talking. Well, that is not necessarily going to be the case moving forward because uh, you uh, will have the options of asking me questions anytime during the session. So there are two ways that you could ask me a question. You could type your questions in that chat window. So notice the chat window here, um, like I am I'm saying, um, hey, uh, welcome. Right. So, and I will send it to the entire audience. And, and notice that that message popped up on your, um, you know, control panel. Uh, if you uh, have any question, you can post that question, and it'll come to me. It'll flash, um, and uh, I will. If I'm in the middle of, uh, you know, something, I will try to finish my thought, and uh, I'll address your question right there and there. So that's uh, interactiveness uh, as far as the chat is concerned. You want to talk to me. Um, you know, just click on that little palm or that hand or the wrist kind of like an icon. And when you do that, it flashes next to your name and I know that you need my attention. And then I will make sure that I, uh, if I'm in the middle of something, I'll finish my thought and then I, I will unmute you and then you could talk to me. So those are basically the way of uh, interacting with me during the session. And after the session, of course, I told you that you should be posting everything into the forums and then we will be interacting. Now, uh, when you complete an assignment, uh, assignments are given out at the tail end of the session every session I'll give you out an assignment at the very end of it and the assignments are submitted back to this uh, email address you can submit to training right at gmail.com uh, so training right at gmail.com as you can see in your um, you know uh, chat window I have given you uh, that email address you should be writing anything to that now uh, in the forums uh, try not to ask any personal questions in the forum like uh, oh I have taken uh, a group uh, or I have taken uh, a bunch of courses uh, you are writing into selenium uh, group now right there are probably around like if not uh, many maybe around like maybe thousand to two thousand students of selenium uh, that have taken this uh, training in the past. So when you say that uh, uh, my SOAP UI videos are not running and you put that into the Selenium and you post it, uh, it it's not fair to the rest of the thousand students to get that message because uh, uh, they will get upset that uh, you know, uh, you're asking a personal question and that too about the SOAP UI course which has nothing to do with the Selenium. So try to keep it technical and try to keep it as uh, uh, related to Selenium as possible. Uh, of course, I mean, you know, here and there you could always, uh, you know, share a joke if you have a good joke, uh, um, you know, feel free to do that as well. Uh, but mostly this is for technical purposes, so keep uh, it to that and uh, post your questions uh, here. Okay, um, 
um, we will make sure that uh, we will add you to the uh, Google groups uh, as soon as we can. So we will be doing it very soon. All right. So at this time, I am going to ask you a question. Um, okay. The question is uh, um, now. Uh, this is a, a Easter uh, Sunday and uh, or a weekend rather, and a Good Friday weekend. And uh, on top of that, it's a spring break for uh, some of the folks. So they have gone out, right? And uh, they are not uh, attending these uh, classes. So um, they had requested me if uh, we can not start this week and we can start next week uh, and uh, they would be able to attend that. Now, I don't have uh, any problems, uh, you know, because I could always go back and tell them that, um, hey, uh, watch the videos of the classes that you have missed, uh, but we're going to uh, be continuing to do that. So um, here is a question uh, for you folks. Uh, um, do you want to continue with the session today or do you want to start off uh, next week? And uh, uh, the question is, do you want to continue uh, today? So if the answer is yes, uh, say yes uh, or just say next week in the chat and uh, I will uh, you know, decide accordingly uh, what we're going to be doing. So you want to continue. So I have a couple of uh, yeses uh, today. If you want next week, you could say next week. Uh, um, okay, I have uh, so far uh, I have uh, uh, two yes and uh, one next week. <laughs> so um, I don't know about the rest of you folks. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, I will make a decision. So it doesn't matter one way or the other. Just, just you know, uh, I I want us to have a nice uh, group in here. Um, so I appreciate if you can respond, uh, you know, yes is fine that we want to continue or uh, next week is fine if you want to say we'll start next week. So uh, just I expect you to just type something in there so that I could at least take a look. Uh, um, well, there is one thank you. <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know how thank you is going to uh, be counted as uh, thank you for what? I mean, thank you for continuing or thank you for uh, doing it next week. So I um, appreciate you um, saying something. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, I think uh, we will. Um, okay. So uh, there is. Okay. All right. Um, look, nothing is going to change either way. Right, nothing is going to change because uh, if we let's say if we start today, and those of you folks um, who are not attending, they can watch the videos. Right? Okay. Let's say if we start next week. Right? Um, I mean today today's session is not going to be counted. Right? Um, so we can definitely uh, you know uh, start next week and. Uh, uh, today and tomorrow, for those of you folks who want to watch the videos, you can watch the videos and uh, still not lose uh, much, right? Okay, so um, I think uh, from what I have uh, seen here, I think I am I'm making a decision that I am uh, continuing with it. So let's um, continue and this will be uh, a go starting today, right? And uh, forgive uh, me and for those of you folks who voted uh, for next week, uh, I apologize um, uh, because I just go by the majority and uh, we have about uh, eight people here and uh, uh, except for the thank you word, I don't know what that means, but uh, uh, four had said um, go ahead, uh, do it today. So I'm just going to go ahead and then do it today. Okay. So this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be um, um, getting started with uh, Selenium. So uh, the idea here is uh, you are here to do some uh, testing, learn some automation. So um, testing is uh, all about making sure that the project uh, or the product rather, uh, the software product that uh, your developers had created, uh, is it uh, um, you know functional or not? So um, our focus is on the functional testing. Now there are different types of uh, I mean testing that we could be doing. We could be doing some sanity testing by um, you know randomly picking up uh, you know the um, the features of the of your application uh, and make sure that uh, you know there is sanity in it, meaning it's it's working. We could do uh, some smoke testing, making sure that uh, you know if uh, login is uh, something that is uh, 
dependent for the rest of the th uh, things to work, uh, then we got to make sure that, uh, <clears throat> and we got to make sure that uh, everything else is going to be working. So uh, unless login works, uh, we cannot be doing anything else. Uh, um, by the way, congratulations, Radha, uh, that you found a job. And uh, uh, yes, uh, Selenium Doubts and Discussion Group uh, is, is this group. Yeah, is this group. So you could ask your questions here. Um, now, uh, I have, uh, by the way, I, I have to uh, say this, uh, I have no doubts in my mind, um, I, have, I have no, um, you know, even confusion or, or, or any uh, negative thoughts that uh, the people who are attending this course, uh, um, will they be getting a job or not? Because that is not even a question. Why that is not even a question? Uh, the only reason that's not a question is because uh, um, you don't want to throw your money. You 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 are smart people. I mean, the fact that you you are willing to pay, you know, that four hundred dollars to take this training only because uh, you see that this can be put to use. How it can be put to use? Your four hundred dollars of investment of your money and your one month of your investment of your time what is going to be the return on your investment? The return on your investment is going to be at least a minimum $75,000 job. I mean, forget it if you, if you say that, ah, I don't know about that. No, no, no. You, you will get that. And, and hundreds of people who have taken this training in the past, they got these jobs. You will definitely, I will give you in writing and then I will, I will, to make sure that I mean it, I will break the nib of my, of my pen. And they used to do it uh, in those movies, remember? The Indian movies, when you watch, uh, they uh, will give in the court, um, the judge will say, oh, you will be put to death, you will be hanged to death, and then you would. They're not showing those uh, dramatic scenes uh, in the new movies these days, but I come from the 80 era. So in 80s and 90s, that's how the movies used to be, you know, very, very dramatic. They have to bring in the mom and they got to bring in the, the father was killed and the, uh, those people would go and then take the revenge. Those stories are gone now. Now they are just, uh, you know, just no clothes. They just shed all their clothes and then they dance. And uh, I, I am embarrassed today to watch Indian movies with my with my family, with my kids, I cannot do that. Uh, we used to sit down, and my, my dad and my parents, they used to take us to movies. Uh, uh, together, we used to watch movies uh, when we were growing up with my family, with my parents. Of course, not uh, movies like uh, Satyam, Shivam, and Sundaram, uh, right? Uh, you, you, uh, you don't expect your dad to take you to that kind of a movie, but uh, good movies. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Today, you can. Um, I don't know why we got into that topic. We digress. So let me pull myself back and then um, do some selenium. So coming back to selenium, um, we have to be uh, making sure that we got to be learning it in, in such a way that uh, we will be putting it to use. And uh, on day one, we are productive at work. Because by the time you're finished with the course, you will have enough of uh, material and enough of knowledge that you will be productive on day one. So I have to start at some point. So here is uh, when I'm, uh, you know, I will introduce uh, uh, the, the technical portions of Selenium. First of all, you got to prepare your machine so that you can do some Selenium testing. So um, the environment needs to be prepared on your machine. The way that is done is you got to start downloading a few things. So first things first, you got to go and you have to start with downloading Selenium IDE. Why IDE? If you recall, I mentioned it to you that Selenium can be uh, learned uh, in three different ways. You could be use, using something called Selenium IDE and you could be using something called Selenium RC server. So this is Selenium. And in Selenium, you have IDE, and you have Selenium RC server, and you have in Selenium something called a web driver. Now, I think I have given you uh, already the reason we are going to be using very little of RC server. Um, even though I might uh, decide not to go with RC server in my lectures, but that 
doesn't mean that uh, you would be um, not learning Access Server because there is a lot of videos that I'll be sharing with you. You watch those videos. I'll give you some assignments. So you have to put your hands on and then do work even on Access Server. Why are we even, you know, uh, spending our time um, even though we are not going to be doing it in the regular classes, but why do I even ask you to do it? Because of the interview questions. They might ask you in the interviews, well, have you worked with Access Server? And believe it or not, I mean, you know, it's a topic for another day. I don't want to get get into a uh, debate of uh, why people they do it but some people they claim that they have four years or five years of uh, selenium experience and uh, they float their resume out with that so if you're going back four or five years uh, today is 2015 um, you know and going back four or five years that uh, is almost like 2010 and 2011 web driver was in its infancy stages at that time very very little web driver so a lot of work was done with RC server so if you're claiming that you you belong to that time you have been working so you have to know what is artist server so just to uh, make sure that you really uh, are saying the right things or not they might you know out of curiosity not that they would be using it but they might ask you this question like okay what have you done in your RC server now you could easily get out of that situation if you're cornered like that oh that's long time back about five years back I've been working on RC server I don't even remember now now come on you do remember if you have worked with something you will remember vaguely as it could be but you would remember so that's why I want you to put some uh, effort learning it into it. probably like two three hours of your time watching the videos see how it is done I don't want to take away your time from your uh, life Live lessons to cover an old topic so that's why I will not do it but that doesn't mean that you should not uh, uh, do it either you should do it and you should watch the videos do the assignments and learn RC server and if you have any questions anytime I'm here to answer your questions and I will take some extra time like 10-15 minutes to um, you know go over your scripts and then um, you know guide you as where you have gone wrong but you have to put in the effort okay so since that is out of the uh, picture right now, we are focusing on IDE and a web driver. Believe it or not, IDE I probably would start today and, and finish off today itself. Why? Because there's not much to be learned in IDE because this is a tool that is used for what? For recording. So you would record and play your scripts using um, IDE. IDE has got its limitations. What are the limitations of IDE? Limitations is it does not do conditional logic. I mean, I cannot, I cannot say if this is the case, uh, else this is the case. I cannot do that in IDE. So uh, the automation is all about conditional logic. Automation is all about using your uh, functions. Automation is all about using your, um, you know, uh, um, for loops and all that. And all that is not available in IDE. So you would say that if that is not available in IDE, why should we even look into IDE? Believe it or not, IDE offers you, offers you, which I will not share with you today. I will share with you tomorrow. Uh, IDE will offer you uh, a trick, right? That trick, once I teach you that trick, of what IDE offers you, <clears throat> even though you know only 10% of programming, you can still survive. Meaning that even 90% of the programming you don't know, still you could survive because there is a trick in the bag that I will be taking out tomorrow and sharing it with you. And that will make you keep coming back to IDE again and again and again and again and again and again. And again. All the time you're going to be coming back to IDE because of that trick that I will teach you to use. And it will make your life so easy, so easy that you're, you, you are going to love to death this IDE, right? Even though in real life there is not going to be a major use of that, but you will find yourself coming back to IDE again and again. So this is sort of your first love that you would never forget, right? So I want you to pay attention to IDE when I show you IDE today and a little bit of it, the trick part of it tomorrow. So let's get started with IDE, Selenium IDE. Okay, so for Selenium IDE, do I have Selenium IDE on my machine? Where do I go and get it and what does it look like? right? Do I have to go through the installation? Is it very hard to install and all that? All those questions will be answered in the next two, three, four minutes. Okay, um, whether you like it or not, uh, Google is going to be our best friend in this course. Anything and everything that we would like to do, we will run to Google and we will ask Google and Google is our partner and he will help us in, in this uh, venture. So I'm going to go to Google and say, hey Google, please help me. Help me to, uh, to do what? To download. Download what? Download Selenium. 
with selenium selenium ide okay makes sense okay we ask google and google says okay here it is my friend i offer you these many links just go to the first top link so i'm just going to click on that top link and i come to this website believe it or not this website what you are seeing here seleniumhq.org this is as they say uh, the bible right i mean bible uh, i mean it's 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 um bible they say is the source of all your um, you know information uh, whatever you want i mean uh, from a theology uh, point of view but from um, the selenium point of view your bible is the seleniumhq.org because anything and everything is here you should go and look for it here so what are you going to be looking for right now i want to look for selenium ide so i want to download that on the download page you have the option of downloading rc server you have the uh, option of downloading the selenium web driver and selenium works not only in with java but it works with c sharp ruby python so many things right now of course these are different courses this course that we are focusing is on java so when i teach you web driver uh, then i will bring you here and then download something from here right now we are talking about what we are talking about ide so if you go uh, down and if you look for it so somewhere down here is <clears throat> your selenium ide so let's um, i don't believe because i i i mentioned very proudly that i don't want to read anything from the powerpoint and here i am going back on my word and i'm reading this well, uh, I'm reading it, but I would read it for two seconds, literally two seconds. What I want to draw your attention to is what is Selenium IDE. So Selenium IDE is a Firefox plugin, meaning that it is going to work with Firefox. It will not work with Internet Explorer. It is not going to, uh, to work with the other browsers like Google Chrome or Opera or Safari and stuff like that. So uh, you would be questioning like, okay, what if I have to work with those uh, browsers? Okay. Uh, remember I told you I have some tricks I will be sharing uh, with you those tricks even though I make a statement that it will not work with all those but I I will show you some tricks that it will uh, will make it work with all those for now let's take their word and their word is selenium is a firefox so you have to have firefox on your machine so I have come on if you see this I have uh, I'm using firefox how do you know because if you go in here this is about firefox and i'm using firefox and my firefox version is 34.0.5 the latest version is i think either 36 or 37 doesn't version doesn't matter um so i am using this version so uh, you have to have firefox if you don't have firefox uh, go and download firefox ask google it will point you to download firefox install firefox the whole process would take about less than you know five minutes and once you have firefox come uh, using firefox to this website seleniumhq.org scroll down a little bit and then uh, download and install it now um when we hear the word download at least i mean because i come from a uh, you know a, 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 a different times uh, where we used to have those modems right remember those modems and some of you say that i never heard of that what is he talking about well uh, when you were growing up uh, when you were probably like a kid uh, we were using those modems uh, again because i come from a previous uh, times uh, so um, the only way to go on to the internet at that time was to use those uh, dial up modems right uh, aol was a service provider and then you dial up and then you go and then you use those uh, modems so anything you were downloading those uh, believe it or not when i was downloading few things there it would take me like 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours to download something right and i would i was not down so this thing the fear of download means that it's going to take a long time got stuck into my head so uh, today when i see download oh, i'm like oh how much time it's going to take but something they get downloaded in the blink of your eye right now how much time does it take for you to blink uh, your eye you cannot even measure that right it's almost similar so i am downloading this one download the latest version which is 2.9.0 here i click and i download it asks me hey you're downloading something uh, are you sure you want to do it uh, do you allow to download yes i want to so one mississippi okay in one second i did not even say two mississippi one mississippi it is downloaded and it is saying that hey which one of you uh, of these do you want to install do you want to do ruby ide da, 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 and you would say just go and install because these are like uh, i don't know maybe down the road i might do something with the python with c sharp and with java formatters and all that so install and it is done 
it is done it is saying they restart now restart what restart computer no restart the browser so i'm just going to say okay go restart and then when i click on that it 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 puts that uh, because it's a firefox plugin and then it it sorts up restarts it and here it is it restarted now how do i know that i have this i have that uh, selenium ide this is what you got to do first of all you got to have this menu items on the top right because when firefox comes it is like that it is like that there is no menu item so if there is no menu item it's easy just right click here somewhere here click on the menu item and the menu item shows up go under tools and click under tools and all the way on the bottom you see something called selenium ide so what we have done is we just learned as how to download selenium ide on your machine and when you click on that the tool opens up and in real life it's not going to look like that so please forgive me uh, because this is from the previous class so uh, it looked like that uh, so let me okay so it is going to look something like that when you open it so let's say when you go to tools and when you do this it's gonna open up like that <clears throat> okay like any other tool this is a tool and this will do something what is it going to do it is going to record what is it going to record your test cases what are test cases uh, well I mean that's manual testing I will not even discuss what is a test case because you already know what is a test case but I will take a step back and I'll say that okay at least I got to share with you the application that you are going to be testing right okay now uh, I don't want to start off with amazon.com or for that matter with ebay.com or with uh, uh, Google email this you know try and imagine this what are the chances that you would ever be able to find out any bugs in those things amazon do you think there is going to be a bug and if even if there is would you think that it is going to be as easy for you to go and then find a bug no right so why don't we do um, you know kill two birds with a stone and the way that is done is I am going to intentionally uh, put some bugs into the application that we are going to be testing so it is your challenge not only to bring up the scripts but to test it in such a way that you are also looking for the bugs in the application and if you go to Amazon if you go to eBay if you go to Google if you go to uh, the chances are it's very difficult to find any bugs because they are not any bugs because the thousands and if not thousands hundreds of testers or, or dozens of testers would have tested it before it uh, went live into production so chances are it's very difficult to find any bugs so you should be looking into something wherein I have intentionally put in some bugs and you should be able to find it okay once you master that once you you know get the idea once you get the feel once you get to know how things are done then you could move on to you know you name it you fill in the blank Amazon eBay uh, Bank of America wh wherever you want to go test whatever you want to test right for now just to maintain the consistency so if you have any issue you can uh, post a question and it becomes interesting for the rest of the group because we are all consistently testing the same application so we're gonna go and look for this application what we're gonna be doing is uh, um, you know a million years ago when I was working for a company um, called um, uh, okay that will remain nameless uh, uh, but it was more like a uh, uh, rewards program uh, company rewards uh, program is uh, you know uh, businesses these days they compete uh, with competition and they have to come up with something so, so that they can retain their customers the way you can retain their customers is uh, you know uh, throw some bones at them right so like you throw a biscuit uh, a bone at a dog so they have to throw something at us uh, so that we uh, keep going back to them and the way we keep going back to them is uh, um, they offer some rewards uh, for us to do business with them so book a hotel if you go to hotels.com uh, book uh, nine times and the 10th uh, time it is going to be free now that's that's a pain in my butt I gotta go to them nine times before I get a room like the 10th time well I you know I don't like that so I I want something better so some other um, companies uh, they give you points uh, you know on the uh, uh, like if you go to uh, um, city uh, cards or if you go to capital one they give you uh, if you use their credit card uh, you know for uh, gas uh, for groceries for uh, pharmacy for anything uh, they give you uh, money back one percent cash back I like that right because at the end of the month uh, I make about uh, like hundred dollars to hundred fifty dollars depending on how much I'm using so that sort of like makes me happy because ah, I saved like hundred dollars or I earn hundred dollars so that's a reward that they give you so we have on the, on the similar uh, concept we have something like uh, uh, I have uh, put together this uh, uh, wherein um, 
uh, you know, um, I have stopped talking after an hour and 15 minutes and it is so relaxing. Uh, that's what um, you probably are saying. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Hang on for a second. I, I got to remember because uh, uh, I, for one, um, I have to find out. One second. MNOP, MNOP, QR. Okay. Okay, JetBlue Frequent Flyer. Okay, so coming back in here, I was pretty close. Uh, Okay, um, um, about uh, almost like a million years ago, I was working, um, meaning a very long time back, I was working for this uh, on uh, as a contractor for them um, and trying to uh, build uh, some applications that they wanted to offer their blue uh, points. So among the different ones, um, you know, I thought I could share a little portion of it uh, so that you can understand. So uh, JetBlue, it's an airline and uh, of course they sell their tickets and uh, they make money. But they also want to get some commissions, um, you know, um, and then they want to keep uh, you as a customer. Uh, so they get commissions from their partners. So they have some partners and the partners they have is in different uh, areas. They have partners like uh, hotels, uh, Marriott uh, is their partner, Hilton is their partner. So after booking a, um, a reservation uh, on their flight, uh, they will bring up some boxes and they say that, hey, do you want to book a hotel? Do you want to book a, a rental car? So they have uh, partnered with uh, you know a lot of companies out there where they also want to treat you in a nice way uh, by not letting you drive uh, by giving you a rental car because rental car everybody would give. They wanted to give you a chauffeur driven uh, service, meaning that a guy with a suit and with a cap and all that with a huge uh, car black limousine would come to the airport and greet you, meet you and greet you and then, you know, take your luggage and then, you know, put you into that nice uh, shining car and um, will drop you to your mother-in-law's uh, house. Um, and your mother-in-law is going to be very happy looking at you like, oh, look at them. They came in like in a nice car because, you know, so you want to you want to show off a little bit, let's say. And there are, I mean, when I say you, not necessarily you, but then there are people like that who would do that and, and, and probably not in our culture uh, because, you know, we, I, <laughs> I uh, see in the grocery stores uh, when I go, I see, and it's so cute, um, I see older um, women, uh, probably uh, the age of like 65, 70 years old, they are in the, vegetable section and then they are looking uh, at everything. They look at uh, a tomato, they pick it up and then they look at it, they turn it around 360 degrees There is, and then if there is like a little black spot, they put it back, right? Because a, a tomato is a tomato, come on! I mean, so this application probably is not for those people, but uh, um, well, um, so uh, the idea here is, let's say if I'm flying to California and I'm, I'm, I'm you know, tired of like driving in that traffic and all that. And I, I want to take this service. This service is available for me, right? So this application is out there, but me being a stingy guy, I mean, I don't want to throw away my money. So I want to find out like, oh, if this, they're going to be sending me a big car, maybe how much it is. So here is the feature, rate lookup. So now don't uh, hear this as a story. He, I mean, watch it as a tester. Right. And we have to automate this. Whatever I'm showing you as a story, this this needs to be automated. So think how what kind of script I am going to write to automate this. And if you get this, if you get this, then, you know, sky is the limit for you. You could go and then do anything. Right. So in the next 30, 40 minutes, uh, I will show you how automation is done and you're going to be 
you know, whistling and saying that, wow, it cannot be this easy. Automation is this easy. I mean, if this is this easy, what was I doing all this time? Well, trust me, it is it is not very difficult. I mean, you know, this is uh, this is uh, what some call uh, uh, you know recording. So basically, what it is is let's go through the manual uh, test case wherein I can talk about myself. I want to find out the rate before I make the reservation. So let's say I am uh, getting out in um, California. So I'm gonna click on this rate lookup, click on that. When I do that, well, as you can see, there is a rate looking for a rate in USA. There is looking for a rate in globe, all over the globe. And believe it or not, I mean, I could have been in Australia watching my World Cup. Uh, um, so I could have done this. I could have uh, gone to uh, any of the cities in Australia or for that matter, Amsterdam or for that matter, Aruba or Athens, Greece, Bangkok. So this is uh, written in alphabetical order. And as you can see, pretty much every country in the world, whether it is Spain, Colombia, Switzerland, China, Ireland, Colombia, that, 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 everything is there, right? Now, if I ask you to do the testing on this one, you will go insane. You would say that I, you know, I don't even know. Oh, what this uh, Tel Aviv is, right? I mean, Tel Aviv is a, a city in Israel, right? Or maybe you all know about that, but probably you don't know about, I cannot even pronounce that, uh, some city in uh, uh, France, uh, Toulouse in France, right? So, so let's not bog down with this. Let's deal with something that we know, which is our good old America. So in America, there are all these states, right? So we have to select a state first. So I said, I'm going to be going to California. So why not select California? I selected California and I will hit select and go. Now imagine again, think from a tester's perspective, I have to write a script wherein I have to go here, click here, come here, drop down, select something in the drop down and click on the select and go. And then it is showing you a bunch of airports because we are flying with JetBlue so we'll be getting off at these airports. Which airport am I getting at? Why is Reno, uh, which is in the part of Nevada, showing up in here? The business logic of the application is it is not only going to show you the airports of the state that you have chosen but also the vicinity of that state, surrounding that state. So surrounding um, California is Reno, Nevada. Right, so that's why it is showing you. So probably like a 50 mile radius or a 100 mile radius, they are showing you. So they're not showing you, you know, other states like, uh, uh, you know, um, Idaho or uh, uh, Utah or uh, Colorado. They're not showing because they're very far. But they are showing this. So I probably are. Uh, I'm going to San Francisco or maybe I'm going to uh, Los Angeles. So I'm going to select Los Angeles, right? And in Los Angeles Airport, I will. I want this. Uh, big uh, black car with a nice looking uh, chauffeur uh, with a suit and a cap uh, to come and then, uh, you know, greet me and uh, pick up my bags and take me to my wherever I want to go. And where I, I want to go, I want to go to my mother-in-law's house. And where does she live? Um, probably she lives in uh, Beverly Hills. Now you would say, come on now, please, your mother-in-law, no, 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 not mine. Um, let's say this is uh, some elite right, uh, who is booking this, right, so this, I, I, you know, I cannot afford to have uh, my in-laws living in, you would say, why you can't afford, anyways, that's a topic for another day, so let's move on, so Los Angeles, and I'm going to Beverly Hills, let's say I'm going to Hollywood, so I'm just going to go and select that town called Hollywood, it is uh, with uh, H H O. so here is my Hollywood, right, Okay, so I want to go to Hollywood. Now, um, I could be going alone on my honeymoon, um, you know, which uh, people would do at times. Or um, I could take my whole family. So if I take my whole family on my honeymoon, then probably I have to go and then get a bus like a motor coach right? Or a mini bus, right? Uh, of course, you don't do that. You don't take people. So you want to go with your spouse or with your boyfriend or a girlfriend, right? So. Um, um, that's the four people car and I click on submit. What do I expect now? Just think about it. What is the expectation? You as a tester, what do you expect right now? Can you, can you tell me what is your expectations? What is your expectation? What do you think it is going to happen right now? Book a reservation for you? The answer is no. It is going to give me the price of that. And here it is. It is giving me the price. It says that $85, $85. And this is, uh, 
uh, the uh, wherever it is taking you, Los Angeles, Hollywood, it is going to be $85. Now, if I am ready, I can go here and say, oh, nice, $85, good, I will book my reservation, and you could go and then uh, click on this. And this is the complete booking of a reservation. So many things happening. Um, we're not going to be talking about reservations today. We're just going to be looking at up to that point of rate lookup. And in the rate lookup, let's say uh, I'm not going to California. Let's say I'm going to um, or I am in New York. So you will be coming to New York. So if you're coming to New York, you select New York and then you click on that. And of course, it's not going to show you California airport. It's going to show you New York airports. So there is an airport called JFK in New York. There is an airport like you would be uh, uh, surprised. Like why is it showing Buffalo? Buffalo is so far, but it is a part of New York, right? It's a part of New York. So all New York airports have to show. But then it's also showing you a Newark uh, Liberty Airport, which belongs to New Jersey. But New Jersey is a border state. Right, so that's why it is showing you New Jersey. So again, this all is a business logic. We, we need not care about it. So what we care about right now is uh, the ability to select an airport from there and where we are going. Well, uh, we all like to see Manhattan. So let's go to Manhattan. So there is Manhattan. And then I will click on that and it is going to say, ah, $85, right? Now you would say that, how come $85 for the previous one and this one is also $85? Well, let, let's uh, choose something else. I mean, I don't know this, uh, whatever that Malvarine is, that is $79. So the pricing is there, right? So you will want to find out what it is. So that's basically what uh, we have to automate, right? Okay, very good. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, in order to do that, this is what we got to be doing. So we got to start off with, bringing in uh, <laughs> if you notice uh, uh, whatever we have been doing it was all recording it everything got recorded in here believe it or not everything got recorded in here right why because when I started when I started selenium IDE I was look up here I was already in the recording mode it was by default it is already recording right so I mean since I did not show it to you so I'm just gonna not uh, save that and start off again so let's go to the uh, home page and now let us go into this tools and let us go into selenium IDE and here is selenium IDE and this is what I'm gonna be doing what I would do is basically I would first of all name my test case right so it is right now uh, untitled so I got to make sure that I save it uh, and give it a name. So the name that I would like to give is file, save test case, save test case as. And uh, um, I want you to create a folder in C drive. If you see, I have uh, different folders in here for different courses and all that. So just create a folder for Selenium Java training. So create a folder in your C drive. And inside that, create another folder, call it IDE test cases. And in there, I will save my test case. So the test case that I want to save is, I'll give it a name, and this is a uh, uh, training right as in TR, TR underscore uh, JetBlue underscore frequent flyer underscore rate rate lookup lookup uh, test case. Right. So that's the name that I have given. Right. So uh, JetBlue frequent flyer rate lookup. That's the name that I have given. So I'm going to hit enter and as you can see, that's the name that we got. It's already in the recording mode. How do I know that it's in the recording mode? If you see, bring my mouse in here, it says now it is recording. So let us go and then record whatever we want to record. What do we want to record? First of all, we want to go into this rate lookup. So I come in here and I click on this rate lookup. Try to click on the middle of it, which is the rate, rate lookup word. You want to click on that. So you clicked on that. Right. And believe it or not, something happened behind the scenes. If you go in here, it it created this this what these commands. So if you look at into um, uh, Selenium IDE, Selenium IDE, whatever actions you do in the browser, it, it makes them as commands. Right. So let's look into this. If you click on that in the bottom here, it shows that the command is open. Open what? Open this project jet blue frequent flyer index.html so it that's where you know it is going to do the testing and after it opened that browser next thing is click and wait click and wait on what so it tells you click on this and if you see this um this is something which we don't even know right so it was supposed to be click on rate lookup but it is giving you some some stuff in here. So later on in uh, tomorrow's class, I will 
um, show you uh, as how to do, uh, how to understand what is all this. So for that, we basically have to look into some other tools. The tools that we have to look into at that time would be something called um, something called uh, Firebug, right? And there is another tool called Firepath, right? So we will be looking into these tools, uh, Firepath. Firepath. So Firepath and Firebug, these tools we have to download and we have to install and then we have to use those tools. So I will be showing those tools to you tomorrow. For now, uh, I just want to draw your attention that whatever action we are doing here, it is uh, recording it. So we clicked on that, we came in here. Here we have to select what? We have to select, let's say California. I selected California and I want to click on select and go. And here I'm again uh, doing something. But before I do that, let's see whatever we did. So click and wait. We clicked uh, um, and we we selected, in fact, if you see here, we selected uh, California. And after we selected California, uh, we uh, did this and then we did that, right? So uh, hang on for a second. Right. So we did that. We clicked uh, and waited. Right. So uh, we clicked on state selected California and then we clicked and wait on that BTN state. All right. So we did that. Now I'm just going to go and then select from here. Let's say uh, San Francisco airport and I will go and select from here. Let's say um, uh, San Francisco from here. Right. So. Uh, San Francisco, right? So from San Francisco airport, I'm going to San Francisco city and I will click on uh, submit. And as you can see, it's cheap. It's $55 because it's right there, right? It's not too far. So it's like $55. Uh, I think I can spend $55 to, uh, you know, show off a little bit. So I will basically go and I will uh, do a reservation. But before I do a reservation, I want to capture, I want to capture that it says that it is $55. I want to um, make sure that it is $55. So what I can do is whatever it is showing you, I can capture it or forget about capturing. Let's say if I have uh, uh, the values that are given to me, they say that, okay, if you're going from San Francisco to uh, from the San Francisco airport to San Francisco, it has to be $55. So make sure that that is correct. So they have given me what is called the expected value and I have to know the actual value. So how can I know the actual value? I have to take this actual value and I have to store it somewhere, right? So either I can store it or I can assert, I can do some assertions, I can do some assertion or I can do some verifications. So if you have done um, some other tool, if you have done QTP, in QTP, you know, there's something called checkpoints. So this is something similar to checkpoints, uh, wherein you could have your assertions, you could have, you can verify it. Uh, so how can I do that? Because I don't want to write the code. How can I do that? Well, it's easy. All those commands are given to us, uh, but you have to use Firefox for it. So highlight that, whatever you want to assert, highlight it, right click on that. And then if you say, show all commands, take a look into what we have. So there is something called assert title. Assert title is make sure that the title of this website is training right international rates page. I mean, who is worrying about the titles right now? I am not, right? What I'm worrying about is I want to make sure that this is $55 and all that, right? So I we have the option of either taking asserts or we have the option of taking verify. Now, the question is, what is the difference between asserts and verify? Well, um, if you look at the test case that we are building right now, right? The test case that we are building, it's a single test case, correct? Single test case. Now, let's say I have more test case following after this. So this becomes more like a suite. Suite means that collection of test cases, group of test cases. So uh, if there is one more test case, one more test case after it, and you want, let's say even something fails, let's say the assertion fails let's say the assertion fails or let's say um, you know whatever we are we are doing here in terms of the assertion if it fails you still want to continue with the text with the test 
you still want to continue with not only with this test but uh, the other test like reservations and all that then in that case you have to choose just the verify if you say assert then the test if it fails it will not continue any further after it so depending on what you're doing you could use verify or you could use the assert so I'm gonna for now I will just use uh, let's say uh, assert text I will use right because I don't have any other after this so I'm just gonna say assert text and when I do that um, it it would have done something uh, in here right as you can see it created all this right so now that all all of these lines are created for me there is if you notice this asterisk that means that you have not saved it so I can do a control s to save it and I did a control s to save it it is saved right now now I can go ahead and I can run this script whatever I have created here we don't know much about it yet right are we going to be discussing that in a minute but we don't know much about it but we just want to go ahead and run it so in order to run it this is what I will do I I want to make sure that I could see so let me do this so to make some space right so I'll make it a little smaller here so that way I can see what is happening and if you see here um, there is something called fast and slow if I run it right now it will run very fast because it's it's at fast I want to bring it to slow it is here and slow now I have these two buttons I have this and I have that the difference between the two buttons is if you see here we had only one test case so this if you read that play entire test suite so right now I don't have anything in here other than only one so it really doesn't matter if I click this or that this is what play the current test case so I want to play the current test case so I'm just gonna be going and then running this so when I do that let me go out of here let me go to let's say Yahoo let's say I'm on Yahoo and uh, let me uh, run this so let's see what happens when I go to Yahoo right okay. okay now I will go and I will click on that let's see what exactly is going to happen according to my first line it says that open this website which website training right is the base URL training right.net and then in training right go to the project and JetBlue Airlines go there and if you see the complete value it is index.html that's where it is going to go and the next thing is after it goes we were saying click on that rate uh, lookup right so it says this is this is the rate lookup how do you know we don't know right now but I will talk to you show you with the fire bug and fire uh, path tomorrow I'll show it to you right now I just want to show you as how to create these scripts uh, so it is going to click on that and then after that it will select that drop down from the drop down it has to select a value of what value of California and then click on that uh, state right uh, and then after that it goes to the next page it selects an airport so we are selecting San Francisco airport then in the city we are selecting San Francisco and then click on the button and then make sure that it shows $55 right so this is the explanation of this what it has recorded right so if you see here uh, it says that now recording click to stop now we don't want to record so I will stop it right it is stop and then I have to play so to play I will run this so let me just put it uh, so what is the first line the first line is it has to bring to that website and then start doing all this let's see if it does that so I click and here we go and it did brought me there clicked on that selected California click on that selected San Francisco selected San Francisco click on that and it did capture that $55 and if you see all this has started to turn to green 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 and this is the last one it executed that and if I go back and look into the results and if you see this green here that means that everything ran uh, it run one time zero uh, failures and all that happened and as you can see my test case is a complete pass and it not only did record the script the whole script but we were able to do the automation and it did work now uh, this is all recording that we have done right this is all the recording using selenium IDE so uh, now there is nothing in picture about RC server there is nothing in the picture about web driver there's nothing like that right so now let's say uh, I like that that I was able to do the recording now that okay I want to I don't want to run it for San Francisco I want to run it for uh, I want to run it for 
the same California, but I want to run it for uh, Los Angeles, let's say. I want to run it for Los Angeles and I want to run for Beverly Hills. So what can I do in here? Uh, not this. What can I do in here? So basically, uh, if you know what to do, you can you can come and you can start to look into these commands and change the uh, the line, change the command uh, or change the data, change the value of what you need to do. So this is fine, opening it, clicking and wait on the rate lookup, select a state, California is fine if you see here, it's California, that's fine. Now click and wait, that's fine. Here in the airport, we selected this in the past. Now we have to select something different. Right? What is that something different we want to select? Let's go back to the application and see, oh, we want to select uh, this one. Right? We want to select that. So if I want to select that, I want to copy this. Now notice I, I, cannot, I cannot actually copy that. Right? So what you can do is you can do something like this. Um, you have to download a tool. You have to download a tool. The tool that you have to download is, again, where would you go to download? Your friend Google. And you say, download Firebug. Download Firebug. When you say download Firebug, what happens? Um, you know, uh, can you believe uh, now it is, uh, it is almost April, but... Uh, it's still not warm, um, not spring here in uh, New York. It's still, I mean, the wind is blowing outside like crazy. And uh, it's still chilly. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it is tiring. I mean, I've been living in this uh, city for almost uh, 21 years now. But uh, now I am a little bit tired of... Uh, uh, this place I really want to move uh, because lately I started traveling because we are offering some uh, corporate trainings and all that um, so uh, occasionally you know once in three months uh, when I um, get bored I want to do some training so we just go out and then do the uh, training so I was traveling and I, I started to see some real good parts of United States uh, um, because we uh, did some training here uh, classes near you if you see um, and there is um, a training coming up uh, in Dallas uh, now we have four trainers we have uh, uh, the other guys who would uh, go and if I am not teaching I would go so we have these uh, trainings that are going on so I, I am I'm traveling and I'm, I'm seeing these places so uh, San Francisco I, I, I like uh, it's a nice city um, you know, weather-wise and all that, but expensive, very expensive. New York, we say that it is expensive, but uh, there are places in New York where you could you could uh, live. Uh, suburbs of New York are not like crazy expensive, but uh, San Francisco is uh, is expensive. Um, okay, uh, occasionally because it it starts to become a dry topping, uh, you know, talking about the subject all for two hours so here and there I just bring in like a sentence here sentence there just to relax a little bit uh, my mind and uh, probably yours as well right um, but that is not to take away anything from what we are learning so let's go back um, and talk about uh, downloading the selenium uh, not selenium but the uh, firebug so uh, I said download firebug and here are the links you come in here and as you notice, it says that, ah, you want to download Firebug? Okay, the current stable version of it is 2.07. And that works fine for, that works fine for Firefox versions 30 to 37. So since you uh, have, uh, if you want to download the older version, you could go in here. My Firefox is what? If you see, my Firefox is 34, right? My Firefox is 34. So I fall in within 30 and 37. So I could download the current stable version, which is 2.07. I click on that. And as you expect, like it will bring here and say that, ah, you want to download Firebug? Okay. Firebug integrates with Firefox, right? And it allows you to do many things, da, 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 right? Okay, let's do that. Add Firefox. So when I do that, again, the same process. Do you want to allow it? Yes, I do want to allow it. And 
uh, it says firebug is not uh, it is from somebody do you trust them yes yes I trust them okay that's what I did and it has been installed I don't even have to sort of uh, um, you know uh, restart my browser so once it is installed how do I know that it is installed you go to tools and you see this something called web developer and when you do a web developer here it gives you firebug and the shortcut for that is F12 right if you do an F12 so you, you can start firebug and as you can see the firebug gets started here so if you take a look in here there is this this bug there is this firebug this bug right next to it this this one is the one that we will be using right so what we want to do is first of all we want to uh, basically find out about what are these things to to us these are menu items right to us this is a drop down this, this is a button but in selenium terminology these are elements on a page these are different elements on a page so if you want to interact with an element if you want to deal with an element like if you want to select something from an element if you want to so first of all you have to inspect right inspect take a look at that element inspector traffic inspector so the traffic inspector what does he do he inspects your license he wants to make sure okay show me your face oh sometimes he says you look different uh, I tell him uh, sir this is an old picture of mine so uh, uh, he would say oh you were looking good at that time you don't <laughs> so uh, basically the idea here is to inspect right so we are going to inspect these elements to find out a little bit more about that so when you look at a document what do you look at you look at the ID or the name right or the social security number those are the ways of identifying the passport number the license number here we don't have a passport number here uh, our license they have all these elements they have something called a name they have name they have ID so we have to find out what is that the way we can find out is click on this one see here so when you click on this one and come here see this blue surrounding it when you come and click on that it will highlight here as you can see it highlights right and it tells you what is the name of that so the name of that is airport right okay if I go and click on that and click on this the name of this is cust city right and I go and click on that and you click on this the name of this you see there is no name or maybe there is a name here see here name so there can be either name so here is what I want you to hear me now you can identify an element these are elements these are elements you can identify an element by its properties or attributes or characteristics so the properties or the attributes or characteristics of an element can be or are ID you can identify by their ID not all elements not all developers will expose the ID some guys some developers are lazy bums right bad people right they don't want to use IDs they don't even want to use names now you would say how in the world can you uh, figure out can you inspect can you identify an element if it doesn't have a name or if it doesn't have an ID some developers they do that to give you an example I go here and let me take there's an outer box there's an inner box let me go and click on that inner box now look at this it says that it's a red lookup I know it's a red lookup but what is it what element is it do we have its ID no do we have its name no do we have it? no we don't have anything about it right what we have about it is something it's an anchor see that anchor it is not even an anchor if you look at it this red look up the inside part of it right it is not surrounding it like this one that outer box is an link anchor means that it's a hyperlink it's a hyperlink but the whole thing has got see here it has got a class so you can identify an element if it doesn't have its name you can identify it by its class or you can even identify it by its location location is oh that guy um, yeah 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 that tall guy I forgot his name but he, his house is the fourth house um, from the left on this street right so you you don't know his name 
you just know that okay he lives here but you can give the fourth location so that is nothing but that way of doing is called the xpath xpath see here xpath so xpath is a uh, uh, way of uniquely identifying the location of an element so when would you use xpath as a means of interacting or inspecting an element if you do not know its id or name right or sometimes the name and id properties are dynamic the developer uh, would change uh, the names and uh, so in that case you want to go with the xpath so to go with xpath you have to download firepath i have already downloaded on my machine but i'll show you the process as how to do that so you come in here and then you go to google and you say download download firepath firepath and um you go in here you click on that and then you should be able to download the uh, firepath firepath is an extension of firebug so you cannot download firepath first you have to download firebug and then install firepath so once you click on that same process allow and then you uh, do that and click on that and you have to basically uh, restart and then it is uh, there so in my case it's it's already there so i'm just gonna go in here and you can see the firepath is already there so um when you look at when you don't have an id and all that then you have to look at the firepath and firepath basically starts something like this it starts right from and i will explain a little bit more about it in the later classes uh, right now whatever you get in here it's it's a firepath sometimes it also starts something like this you will see uh, as an example you would see two forward uh, slashes and an asterisk something like that so when you see two forward slashes and something that is also a firepath now with that said if you come back and look at this now what do you think this is what do you think this is compared to that this is identifying an element by its id right by its name by its id by id but if you look at that can you immediately say that because you see these two uh, forward slashes and a string of HTML elements in here. You should tell that okay, this is getting identified by its XPath, XPath, right? So XPath is another way of uniquely identifying the location of an element on a page. So this we don't even know, but this was what this was that uh, rate lookup. And since it did not find any name for it, if it finds an ID or a name, it'll get that. If it doesn't find, then it will get the XPath of it and manually getting the xpath of an element is as simple as let's say if i want to get the xpath of this you could take this you could do that don't look at the uh, name and all that this would be the xpath of that this would be the xpath i can literally take this right and substitute in my in my in place of that uh, which one did we use uh, we used it for the airport right so i come in here for the airport I can literally uh, substitute this name and remove and then put this and then it'll still work. It'll still work. I should not, if I already have the name, I should use the name. I should not, right? I should not. So our original problem here was we don't want to use San Francisco. We want to use uh, this uh, Los Angeles. So we have to come in here and we have to select Los Angeles. So if you expand it, right, this is what you do. You come in here. You select that, you show this, and see the plus sign, and if you expand, it will give you everything, and just take the Los Angeles, just copy it from here, copy it from here, control C to copy, and come in here, and here, when you select that, here, just change this part, right, and paste that, you paste that. So, since we are using LA now, the uh, city has to be different, so coming back here, in LA, let's go to uh, Beverly Hills, right? So Beverly Hills is uh, um, uh, where is that? B E V E uh, Beverly Hills. Okay. So uh, the Beverly Hills part, since we go take this, take that, and here Beverly Hills. Here, if you expand, 
you can go to Beverly Hills and copy it. Either you can type it or you can copy it. So Beverly Hills, the case doesn't matter. It has to be exactly the way it is. So you have to copy exactly like that. So you would take the Beverly Hills, control C to copy, come in here and put it in here in the cus city. Uh, just the city you change, right? The label equals, you keep it like that. You save it now. It, it is that, do a control S to save. Right? Or you could have done this and save test case. And now let us run this. So now if I run and if it selects, right, uh, let me just uh, close this and let us run this right script and let's see if it runs that. So here we go. I run it and let me just move it on the side and I run it. Now it might fail here. You will see that it has to fail here because we are asserting, still asserting that it is $55. Maybe it is $55, maybe it is not. So I don't know. So maybe it will fail. So because the real value of that is expected value would be something else. We are doing the assertion. We are expecting it to be $55. It might not be $55. So let's uh, run it and find out what the deal is. So here we go. I run. So it takes me back to that website, clicks on rate lookup and California and then it selects Los Angeles, very good, Beverly, and then click on that, and it is $80. So now it will look for it, and it will fail here, and it will say that, oh, this part had failed. So if you see here, this is a red, it failed, because the assert is, it is, it is looking for, according to my thing, according to my script, it is looking for what? It is looking for $55, and it is $80 as shown, so it will mark it as fail, test is fail, right? Well, okay, so that's about it for today. So what I have done today is uh, I have introduced you to what is Selenium. And we basically talked about uh, how to prepare the environment by uh, getting uh, Selenium on your machine, Selenium IDE. We said that Selenium comes in different forms. So I talked to you and I said that, okay, we will be dealing with Selenium IDE. I will show you uh, how to record and how to play. And um, the most important part of Selenium IDE is there is a trick that I will share with you tomorrow. And uh, you will see that uh, your life is going to be very, very easy if you learn that trick because uh, um, we will be, uh, tomorrow we will be learning as how to write the Selenium web driver, beginning of Selenium web driver. So I'll be uh, teaching you a little bit of uh, uh, Java tomorrow. Um, so I will introduce with uh, those variables and those all those good things tomorrow. And then we basically will uh, start off uh, uh, to build some automation scripts tomorrow. So um, now if you have any questions, uh, feel free, ask me if you have any questions. If you don't have any questions, I'm not going to be um, teaching anything new. Here is your assignment. The assignment is I want you, <laughs> now I will, I will really give you a big assignment here. I want you to go and do not one, which is the rate lookup, which I already showed it to you, right? Which I already showed it to you. But I also want you to continue with the script so that you have the second test case. And the second test case is you have to go and complete the reservation. So when you send me the uh, assignment after you complete the assignment, this is what I should be seeing. I should be seeing you sending me two test cases, right? So one is for this one and the other one, the other one is for the rate lookup and send me a screenshot wherein I will see two screenshots, one for this one and the other one for the uh, new reservation. So that will have many more lines in there in the new reservation. That will be the second test case. And uh, if you do that, it is a few things that it will tell me about you. Number one, you have paid attention to what I was teaching you today, number one. Number two, you would have put in some effort uh, from your side by going and downloading Selenium IDE. And you would have put in some effort from your side by uh, downloading Firebug, Firepath. And then you would be doing some effort from your side because you would have created not one, but two test cases. And you will send me the screenshots of these two test cases. I have already given you the email address where to send it. Um, and I will be waiting for uh, your submissions and we'll take it from there. Um, now, uh, 
how many classes will we be taken to finish Selenium on Java course? Eight classes. There are going to be eight classes. Uh, like today, today was the first class, so I was just making some, uh, uh, you know, uh, trying to lay out the plot or uh, laying the foundation. So I was doing some talking, but it is going to be a completely hands-on course, total hands-on course. It is going to be, and uh, there are going to be eight classes. And you'll be attending all those eight classes and eventually you'll be learning a lot of stuff uh, today. Uh, not today, in fact, like today, uh, we'll be uh, learning a lot of uh, stuff and that uh, you would be able to uh, put to use in your uh, work uh, before you go for uh, any, um, uh, any project, uh, you have to watch all those eight videos, complete eight assignments. Tomorrow's class, uh, uh, let us um, let us keep it uh, around um, 11 let us keep it around 11 I will send you the invitation now this is what I would like to know uh, now whether you are a registered student whether you are not a registered student um, uh, if you have already paid right because tomorrow we will not be sending a link to anybody who has not paid if you have already paid for this course um, send uh, me an email uh, at trainingride at gmail.com and uh, we will send you the invite. If you have not paid for the course, you can go to trainingride at gmail, uh, not at gmail. Uh, you should go to trainingride.com and you should go under courses to Java and then you could buy this course. Uh, uh, and then once you buy the course, we will set up your account and give you all that. Now, if you are debating, uh, the best thing is uh, 399 will give you this course. Uh, if you want, uh, you can go uh, and buy, uh, scroll down and buy both of this. So you could buy um, C Sharp as well as Java. Um, uh, you missed the 10 minutes uh, due to whatever. So. Uh, yeah, uh, all the recording will be uploaded in two hours from now because that's the time it takes to process the videos. Um, okay, so please send me uh, your emails if you want to join, even if you're a paid member. If you don't get your invitation to come to the class uh, um, by uh, uh, this evening, uh, then you should send us an email um, that you are not uh, receiving uh, the inv invite, right? Uh, because uh, on day one, because uh, some something might happen, we might have missed you. So just uh, send us an email. All right. Okay. I'll let you guys go. Um, uh, thank you for being here, and I'll see you same place, same time tomorrow, eleven o'clock in the morning, eleven a.m. in the morning. We will start the class. Thank you, and have a good one. Bye bye.